welcome and thank you for joining me on this Saturday for morning prayer. Some of you have asked about the books that I read from each day, so I thought I would share just a little bit of their story. Having had a conservative evangelical upbringing and a Damascus Road experience whereby I came to a very real and life-changing faith, the scriptures have played a pivotal part in my own Christian journey. Having gone to Colin Urquhart's Bible College right at the very start of that journey, I learned to personalise the scriptures, understanding that I am as much a part of God's story as are the many heroes of our faith. Jesus is, of course, the means through which the Father has chosen to reveal himself to us. And through the scriptures written in some cases by those who walked with him, we can see the face, voice and hands of God himself how he reveals the truth of who he is and what his plans and purposes are for us, his children. And that's why I often use books which are able to personalise the scriptures, because they are for you and for me, speaking across the centuries to each generation afresh, inspiring, comforting and at times correcting, but always in love and for our good. If you've been following my daily service, you will have heard me read from Jesus Calling, My Dear Child, and today, Your Personal Bible. These books are, of course, just one way for us to grasp how God feels about us, what it means to live in the Spirit, and to experience God's words directly to us. And so I hope that they are as helpful to you as they have been and continue to be for me. Today the Church remembers and celebrates Mark the Evangelist. So I'm going to read just a little bit from a book called Exciting Holiness. John Mark was a Jew and according to Paul's letter to the Colossians was a cousin to Barnabas. He accompanied Barnabas and Paul on their first missionary journey. Afterwards he went to Cyprus with Barnabas and to Rome with first Paul and then Peter. Mark's Gospel is generally regarded as the earliest and was most likely written while he was in Rome. It was probably based on much of Peter's preaching of the Good News as on Mark's own memory. Mark's Gospel has a sharpness and an immediacy about it, and he does not spare the Apostles in noting their weakness and lack of understanding that Jesus Christ would suffer for the world's redemption. Sharing in the glory of the resurrection means sharing in the giving of self both in body and spirit, even by death. Sharing the gospel was for all, in essence, both excessively generous and ultimately sacrificial. And so today in our collect we will remember Saint Mark. O Lord, open our lips and our mouth shall proclaim your praise. The night has passed and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and forever. Amen. So today's psalm is Psalm 37. Our steps are made firm by the Lord when he delights in our way. Though we stumble, we shall not fall headlong, for the Lord holds us by the hand. I have been young, and now I am old. Yet I have never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. They are ever giving liberally and lending, and their children become a blessing. Depart from evil and do good, so you shall abide for ever. For the Lord loves justice, and he will not forsake his holy ones. The righteous shall be kept safe for ever, but the children of the wicked shall be cut off. The righteous shall inherit the land and live in it for ever. The mouths of the righteous utter wisdom, and their tongues speak justice. The law of their God is in their hearts, and their steps do not slip. The wicked watch for the righteous and seek to kill them. 
but the Lord will not abandon them to their power, or let them be condemned when they are brought to trial. Wait for the Lord, and keep to his way, and he will exalt you to inherit the land. You will look on the destruction of the wicked. I have seen the wicked oppressing and towering like a cedar of Lebanon. Again I passed by, and they were no more. Then I sought them, but they could not be found. Mark the blameless, and behold the upright, for there is posterity for the peaceable. But transgressions shall be altogether destroyed, the posterity of the wicked shall be cut off. The salvation of the righteous is from the Lord, he is their refuge in the time of trouble. The Lord helps them and rescues them, he rescues them from the wicked and saves them, because they take refuge in him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our first reading is taken from the book of Isaiah, chapter 62, beginning at verse 6. Upon your walls, O Jerusalem, I have posted sentinels. All day and all night they shall never be silent. You who remind the Lord, take no rest, and give him no rest until he establishes Jerusalem and makes it renowned throughout the earth. The Lord has sworn by his right hand and by his mighty arm, I will not again give you grain to be food for your enemies, and foreigners shall not drink the wine for which you have laboured. But those who garner it shall eat it and praise the Lord, and those who gather it shall drink it in my holy courts. Go through, go through the gates, prepare the way for the people. Build up, build up the highway, clear it of stones, and lift it up as an ensign over the peoples. Today's canticle is called A Song of Wisdom. O God of our ancestors and Lord of mercy, you have made all things by your word. By your wisdom you have formed us to have dominion over the creatures you have made, to rule the world in holiness and righteousness, and to pronounce judgment in uprightness of soul. Give us the wisdom that sits by your throne. Do not reject us from among your servants, for we are your servants with little understanding of judgment and laws. Everyone who is perfect among us will be regarded as nothing without the wisdom that comes from you. With you is wisdom, she who knows your works and was present when you made the world. She understands what is pleasing in your sight and what is right according to your commandments. Send her forth from the holy heavens, from the throne of your glory send her, that she may labour at our side and that we may learn what is pleasing to you. For she knows and understands all things. She will guard us in wisely, and our actions will guard us with her glory. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. Our second reading is taken from the book of Acts, chapter 12, beginning at verse 25. After completing their mission, Barnabas and Saul returned to Jerusalem and brought with them John, whose other name was Mark. Now in the church of Antioch there were prophets and teachers, Barnabas, Simeon who was called Niger, Lucius of Cyrene, Manian, a member of the court of Herod the ruler, and Saul. While they were worshipping the Lord and fasting, the Holy Spirit said, Set apart for me Barnabas and Saul for the work to which I have called. Then, after fasting and praying, they laid their hands on them and sent them off. So, being sent out by the Holy Spirit, they went down to Seleucia, and from there they sailed to Cyprus. When they arrived at Salamis, they proclaimed the word of God in the synagogues of the Jews, and they had John also to assist them. When they had gone through the whole island as far as Paphos, they met a certain magician, a Jewish false prophet, named Bar-Jesus. He was with the proconsul Sergius Paulus, 
an intelligent man who summoned Barnabas and Saul and wanted to hear the word of God. But the magician Elimas, for that was the translation of his name, opposed them and tried to turn the proconsul away from the faith. But Saul, also known as Paul, filled with the Holy Spirit, looked intently at him and said, You son of the devil, you enemy of all righteousness, full of all deceit and villainy, will you not stop making crooked the straight paths of the Lord? And now listen, the hand of the Lord is against you, and you will be unable to see the sun and will be blind for a while. Immediately mist and darkness gave over him, and he went about groping for someone to lead him by the hand. When the proconsul saw what had happened, he believed, for he was astonished at the teaching about the Lord. Then Paul and his companions set sail from Paphos and came to Perga in Pamphylia. John, however, left them and returned to Jerusalem. So let us say together the words of the Benedictus. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies, from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, shall be called the prophet of the Most High, for you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. So I'm going to read from Colin Urquhart's book, Your Personal Bible. And this one is called My Support. The Lord will renew my strength, because my hope is in him. I will soar on wings like an eagle. I will run and not grow weary. I will walk and not be faint. Even to your old age and grey hairs I am he. I am he who will sustain you. I have made you and I will carry you. I will sustain you and I will rescue you. For the Lord comforts his people and will have compassion on his afflicted ones. The Sovereign Lord has given me an instructed tongue to know the word that sustains the weary. He wakens me morning by morning, wakens my ear to listen like one being taught. It is the Sovereign Lord who helps me, who is he who is able to condemn me. Though the mountains be shaken and the hills be removed, yet my unfailing love for you will not be shaken, nor my covenant of peace be removed, says the Lord, for I have compassion on you. Come, all you who are thirsty, come to the waters, and you who have no money, come buy and eat. Come buy wine and milk without money and without cost. Why spend money on what is not bread, and your labour on what does not satisfy? Listen to me, and eat what is good, and your soul will delight in the richest of fare. Give ear and come to me, hear me that your soul may live. I will make you an everlasting covenant, my faithful love promised to David. For seek the Lord while he may be found, call on him while he is near. As for me, this is my covenant with them, says the Lord, my spirit who is on you, and my words that I have put in your mouth will not depart from your mouth or from the mouths of your children or from the mouths of their descendants from this time on and for ever, says the Lord. So let us pray.
Father, we give you thanks for the privilege of communication. We thank you, Lord, for the instant phone calls that we can make, for post, for emails, and for all means of keeping in touch with those we care about. Lord, you call us to love our neighbours as we love ourselves. Guide us to those this day and this week who need encouragement, who need a friendly voice or word to help them. Lord, help us to be your body, your mouth and your hands for all those in need. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, help those who are trying to keep peace in the world and those who are trying to find it. Draw near to those who are in any form of conflict. Inspire people to treat others as they themselves would want to be treated. Lord Jesus, you are here with us, ready to speak peace, give wisdom and restore all who are hungry, thirsty and weary. Empower us for your mission by filling us afresh this day with your Holy Spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, for your church here in this place, remembering especially today Barbara Walker, Trixie, Helen, Katie White, Anne and Mick Rowland, Arthur, Daniela, Dara and Leela, Chris and the Percys. And in a moment, let's remember wherever you are, those people who have asked for your prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray, Lord, as your disciples, your church would be always willing to follow you, ready to be a witness to your resurrection power, ready to proclaim what you have done, what you are doing, and what you will do in the future. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Almighty God, who enlightened your holy church through the inspired witness of your evangelist, Saint Mark, grant that we, being firmly grounded in the truth of the gospel, may be faithful to its teaching both in word and deed. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. And as our Saviour has taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil and keep us in eternal life. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God.